This program was produced by Blue Ridge Public Television and made possible by a grant from the National Educational Telecommunications Association's Education Production Fund and by the McLaughlin Foundation of Bristol, Virginia. My name is Jenna Swan. I'm a fifth grade teacher in Blacksburg, Virginia. In the summer of 2004, I traveled to Africa with a handful of public school teachers from Southwest Virginia. Our visit was part of an ongoing exchange between the School of Education at Virginia Tech and the nation of Malawi. Malawi is a landlocked sliver of Africa, fitting between the puzzle pieces of Mozambique, Zambia, and Tanzania. We spent most of our month visiting and working with the students and teachers of Damasi Government School. The continent has its cities, but the Africa I came to know is rural. Malawi contains equatorial rainforest to the north, but comfortable savanna to the center and south. A village in Malawi has an intimate understanding of seasonal cycles and available resources. Shaggy gray thatched roofs and red earth walls make good homes for the people. And to thank the earth and to celebrate community, Malawians dance. African soil grows food and provides the materials for shelter, but it also yields much more, the ingredients for children's play. Children draw maps and stories in the red earth and invent elaborate games with stones. African children also know how to recycle. A tough soccer ball is made of a tightly tied bunch of plastic bags. Disused wires are bent fantastically into brilliant galimotos, skeletal cars, or bicycles with riders. Another thin blue trash bag tatters along as a pale, sky-colored kite. Most of the children's parents are farmers who depend on their cows and wagons or on their own sturdy legs. Women carry the day's harvest or water for their families on their heads. Wood gatherers provide the fuel for cooking fires which are especially needed for the long process of smoking fish from Lake Malawi. The lake's waters flow south to strengthen the great Zambezi River and are a major source of food. Fishermen use boats, some of which are canoes made from hollowed kapok trees. They cast nets at dawn and retrieve them at dusk. The women, calf deep in the lake, greet the returning fishermen and begin their work. They lay out, turn, and smoke the fish. Once dehydrated, this plentiful chombo harvest is sold in the pungent fish market. Nearby, other women sell their eggplants, starchy cassava roots, green beans, and my favorite, pumpkin leaves, which are cooked down to make a dish called inkwani. You can also buy a butchered chicken, pig, goat, or cow. And, if you like, the market cooks will even grill your meat for you before you carry it home. In the city, the market contains bolts of bold cloth, tailors, an occasional car, and mask carvers who graciously dust their pieces before handing them to a tourist. The day begins at Damasi Government School when a child strikes a metal wheel hanging from a neem tree. The sound of the bell begins the rush of children to morning assembly. They line up by standard or grade to recite the pledge and sing an anthem blessing Malawi's president. In the classroom, children pack the floor. 
and the walls are bare. There are no bookshelves full of teaching materials, so the teacher's main resource in the school is a rough chalkboard. There may be only a few books used for reciting lessons. Bright sunlight streams in through the windows, providing the only light source. Students begin learning English early in Standard 2. In the elementary standards, there are 60 to 120 children per class, although the class size drops to 30 or 40 for teenagers. Sadly, not even one in three of the older students is female. Most adolescent girls are married in their early teens according to the customs of their culture. Those who do persevere in education must contend with extra cleaning chores at school, including the cleaning of all the toilets. Indoor lessons around the chalkboard include vocabulary and choral reading, but outside you see the students and teachers alike teaching and learning with available resources. Sewing lessons are difficult because only a few students have needles, but everyone has access to corn husks. And so a class learns a method of weaving this plentiful resource into mats, which may go to the market to be sold. My fellow teachers and I thought long and hard about what would make good gifts for the children. We brought sewing needles, paper, and pencils, but also some things these children had never seen large books with color illustrations, frisbees, a baseball bat and a machine sewn ball, crayons and markers. Before my visit, my dentist volunteered 200 toothbrushes and enough toothpaste for the class. Less than a fourth of the children had ever held a toothbrush or seen a brand new one still wrapped in plastic. I demonstrated brushing and emphasized that a toothbrush is just for one person and not to be shared with the family. Zikomo, the children said, thank you for these toothbrushes. One teacher, Jen Pollard, brought her Appalachian fiddle and gave the children a taste of clogging, our local folk dance. Damasi School and the nearby villages are fortunate. They have relatively clean and available water. Roads from town are dirt, but easy to travel except during the four-month monsoon. Malawi is at peace with no civil war, good fish from the lake, jobs at coffee and tea plantations, and plenty of mangoes, bananas, and avocados. They have much to dance for. But other problems remain. On one day during our visit, the government sends in workers who record the children's names. Boys and girls fetch water from the well. Then they pass a communal cup, chewing and swallowing a large, bitter pill containing ringworm medicine. Unfortunately, the government cannot also afford malaria or AIDS medicine. Malaria, caused by mosquito bites, is both preventable and treatable but it continues to ravage even more people than AIDS, a deadly disease affecting millions of people all over Africa. <laughs> to raise awareness of AIDS, teachers do what they can by starting clubs and putting on plays. Teachers also work hard to emphasize school hygiene and pride. Every morning, to discourage snakes, Children sweep the schoolyard with homemade brooms. Once a week, they have a big cleaning day, and it is the children who clear the cobwebs from the walls and ceiling and scrub the concrete floor. They water flowers, and with their bare hands as sponges, they carefully wash even the broken window panes. And still, despite their many responsibilities, or probably because of them, the children of Malawi still find time and reason to dance, giving thanks for all good things. There goes Dambo, whose name means in the valley where the vegetables grow. And there dances Tokozani, whose name means give thanks. They have much to dance for, 
and we are honored to dance with them.